Windsor, Nova Scotia today to meet with Cam Hartley, Principal of Schoolhouse Brewing. He's going to give us a tour of the brewery and give us his thoughts on the industry and kind of let us know how he got to this point here today. I'm here in the brew house with Cam Hartley, the owner, and uh, it's, it's been quite a journey for you, Cam. Starting, I guess, way back 2008 was kind of the beginning of, of Schoolhouse. That's right. And uh, so you registered as a company, so you always had the end goal of, of opening a professional brewery? Yes. Yeah, you know, it had been on my mind probably since I started All Grain Brewing in 2005. And it, I always think 2008 was the year that I went into Access Nova Scotia, my 50 bucks to do the name search schoolhouse brewery and then to register that name. So that was the first step in in kind of starting starting the brewery. I mean as yeah. far as an official brewery. Late 2012 um, I went into the planning office and I said, you know, I want to run this as a as a home based business. Mm. Cuz that was really a deal breaker. Uh, if I had to go outside and pay rent and or build a thing, it we you know it just would have been too expensive. So they uh, they they kind of looked through the rule book and they said, well, it doesn't say anything about breweries not allowed to be home based businesses. So yeah, I got to go ahead, and that's when I really felt like okay, now it's on. But you never could open a retail space there. Like you're always no. kind of. Uh, just stuck to kegs and uh, and the farmers market. That's right. Uh, I mean, that was sort of limiting in one way, but really realistically, I'm only brewing 150 liters a week. Um, there wasn't any extra to have people knocking on my door. This is kind of uh, your thing. Of course, you're on Canadian Handyman, and uh, <laughs> this is really a handyman brewery. I think everything here pretty much has your fingerprints on it as far as uh, what you made and created, uh, even from these mash tons and, and kettles that you bought. <laughs> yes. And uh, Well, yeah, and, and that's you know part of my passion. I, I'm passionate about beer. And I'm passionate about design and building, and uh, so they kind of all goes all goes hand to hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this brew system behind us, I was fortunate to find these two beautiful copper vessels uh, in Malagash at Yost Winery. They had been in a warehouse there for probably 15 years, collecting dust. Yeah, they were in hard shape. Uh, they were they were in, they were in hard shape. There was lots of dust on them. It's a unique brew system. There's no. Propeller has one similar, so I went mm. and brewed with them so I could kind of figure it out. And um, I put in an offer, long story short, and they accepted it. And I thought, okay, now I've got to figure out how this thing works. <laughs> so what has kind of changed over the last, say, three or four years, or even the last couple of years since you've upsized? There's so many breweries, and they're all, there's lots of people making great beer. So the bar, the bar is higher than it ever has been before. Um, mm. That's a challenge, but that's a good challenge. It's really yeah. good for the Nova Scotia beer industry. Um, I think there was a time where you could get away with letting some batches go that weren't totally up to snuff. Yeah. And people might not have, may not have noticed because they just weren't, yeah. you know, craft beer was really young. It was just different. Um, but now, now you really got to have your A game on. Um, you got to be making great beer and mm. What I've learned from being a home brewer to going to the smallest commercial craft brewery in Nova Scotia to this, I mean, the, the mistakes I've made and what I've learned about producing a quality consistent product has been so valuable uh, mm. to getting us where, where we are now. Um, mm. I, it's, it, it's a lot, it, it's, there's a lot more variables uh, when you get to, to a commercial size. Yeah. Going from a homebrew system to kind of uh, cobbling stuff together to make it a commercial system. Because when I started, nobody designed stuff for one, one and a half barrel brewery. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff kind of was, was homemade. Um, but I spent years carrying bags of grain downstairs, mm. squeezing past a brew table. So when we set this yeah. place up, we wanted, I wanted good <laughs> grain handling. So you can see all these pipes these white pipes behind us. Uh, we don't carry any more bags of our base malt. We use maritime grown malt. Uh, so we have a truck that fills our silo. And um, these, these white tubes take it to our mill room, into our mill. 
Uh, it also uh, uh, takes it from the mill into our hopper and then into our mash tun. So these little things like the, the floor drains, uh, the grain handling system, mm -hmm. even, even the layout of all the fermenters, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot, I spent a lot of time um, working, working on this layout. Yeah. Take, take, I've taken about five years to get to this point. Yeah. So the, 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 it's a long game and that long game, you usually tend to get things right with your yeah. planning. So. It's, uh, I've been in a lot of breweries and yours is probably laid out, uh, other than all the piping for your, for your grain, <laughs> but that was something different. <laughs> yeah. uh, in order to put the silo for convenience, but uh, it's laid out very logically. Yeah. Um, a lot of them because, you know, some of them expanded over time and, and yeah. they didn't want to move tanks and things around. Well, it becomes expensive and it just isn't laid out. This is, you could tell a brewer who kind of knew things kind of uh, designed this. So. Yeah. So it's, it's been, it's been, I've enjoyed doing the design. Um, I don't actually have much to do with the, the brewing anymore. Uh, Lee is our head brewer mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's been it's been interesting because he's been with me since the schoolhouse and he started just washing kegs and filling growlers and now wow uh you know he he took over the reins of brewing uh probably three years ago now mm -hmm. and now he's he's taken the brewing way beyond where what i what i know now so yeah it's all so he's hiring. been able to take take the brewing to a next level yeah and uh he's he is dedicated to the beer that's his his focus and it, it allows me to do all the multitude <laughs> of other things a business owner yeah. has to do uh to keep you know to keep this uh this brewery kind of on course yeah. things you kind of need the beer to wash away the memory of at the end of the yeah, day that's right that's right <laughs> well we have a our end of shift beer for our staff and i really enjoy that's that a, end of when i'm done working here sit yeah. in the tap room and talk with my staff and and drink our product and yeah this definite perk definite perk definite oh yeah perk. we have uh the kettle yep so is... this is a, a kettle this is a, a steam fired kettle um oh, we really don't know who originally manufactured it um but uh it's it's an old workhorse it's it's beautiful and it works great mm. um this on the right is a very is a unique setup this is a mash tun hot liquor tank like I say, very, I think we're, other than the Propeller Brewery on Gottagen Street, yeah. I think we're the only brewery that has this kind of setup. So the top chamber is where our, uh, our mash goes in. And okay. we've got uh, mechanical rakes. And mm -hmm. the bottom here, before I open that door, make sure there's no, <laughs> it's not filled with water. Yeah, I don't have uh, the this, boots on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this, is, um, uh, this is basically a, a hot water tank. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, everything steam. I, th this brew system, it's it's not huge, um, mm. but it does it does allow us to the way it's set up. It allows us lots of versatility with how we brew. And uh, yeah, Lee and assistant brewer Reed are rocking this little system lately. Mm. <laughs> Our production's way up. So so you're like a lot of brewers. You have your your fermenters named uh, yes yes Statler and Waldorf Statler and Wardoff what we yeah. move right around here yes so uh, so what, where did these come from there's well, uh, well crowdsourced or did you just kind of these uh, so these are my design um, I I like designing stuff on graph paper mm -hmm. to suit our needs these are unitanks so we can actually carbonate in these uh, I needed a nice port for dry hopping because we love dry hopping our beers um, I wanted them nice. to f be sized to, for the space. Mm -hmm. So I kind of designed them. I sent them overseas to someone who I was working with. He'd send me back CAD drawings to approve. Once they were approved, we'd, we'd basically put a deposit down and these all arrived in a big shipping container. And it was like, it was kind of like a big Christmas day, but also with a little <laughs> bit of, of uh, nervous anticipation being like, I hope those are going to be what I saw in the drawings. <laughs> Same thing with all this, uh, this platform. Yeah. Uh, this platform showed, like I designed it on graph paper to, to fit this brew, brew house. And when all, I took all the pieces out of the box, I was like, I hope this, <laughs> I hope this fits. And if it, yeah. it, everything fit perfectly, it was fine. 
Awesome. Well, that's great. So, so uh, the, the the Statler and Waldorf, of course, they look down at the brewer and assistant oh, brewer, just gotcha. like the okay. two old guys in the Muppets, right? I've been called one of those guys <laughs> fairly often. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I can so we see got. It. Yeah. I don't know Ms. Fizzle. Is that? Uh... Well, you got to have kids to know Ms. Miss Frizzle. Oh. Miss Frizzle's uh, the uh, main character on a kid's TV show, Magic School Bus. Oh, yes. Now it's it's all coming back. Yes. My kids are a little older. Yes, that's awesome. right. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, Very cool. Uh, we've got, uh, yeah, some other, we've got some names for these guys, but we haven't got the uh, stickers made for them yet. Okay, cool. And, and, of course, playing with the school theme, we've got the chemical element. Yes. <laughs> style signs. Yes. All right, well, let's head on out into the retail space and uh, okay. see what you, what's going on out there. Great. So we're here in the, in the retail space of uh, Schoolhouse. So uh, you want to talk a little bit about the design and of the tap room and kind of your vision? And yes, well, it kind of took, because this used to be an old Ford dealership. In oh, fact, this okay. was way back in the days when Model Ts would come up and come off ships here and they were assembled upstairs right? and sold here. So this was a car dealership wow. uh, for a very long time. Anyway, um, so when I, once I got my, I wanted a, a retail space and a tap room space. I wanted a bank of taps for growler filling over a sink. <laughs> so that's how I designed it. Uh, I also, we're, we're also, we also believe in, you know, the, the, the craft beer camaraderie. We're fine filling anybody's growlers. Long. That's awesome. So we've got our, of course, our product fridge and um, yeah, you know, our retail stuff with our t-shirts and stuff. So this is kind of, we try to keep this as the great, great debate. Um, the, the, the bottles, the bottles are neat, um, but they're, we're bottling on a bottler that I built, okay. like a lot of things. And, uh, so it's, it's doing the trick, but it's pretty slow. Um, and we're working with the mobile canner. Uh, the mobile canner allows us to package in five hours, what would take us four 12 hour days the bottler. Yeah. Let's finish this one last yeah. night. <laughs> so very unique, you go into a bar, you, you know if you see a pencil, schoolhouse is on tap. That's right. Um, so who kind of envisions that? Is that kind of your thing or do you have a lot of help so, from, uh, from staff or? A, a lot of it comes out of my head. Like I, I've, got a, I, I've got a good sort of visions. I guess I'm a vision kind of person, um, but I'm not, I'm not a great artist. I'm not okay. like if I try to draw I don't know, a horse, it just looks so bad. <laughs> it just looks so bad. I drew a horse uh, the other day and they thought it was a cat. So, yeah, well, uh, there yeah. you go, yeah, yeah. I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd be, in, we'd, we'd be in the same, same level. So uh, I work with uh, some great designers. Mm -hmm. So, and then with kind of, uh, Eric Miller's a guy who, who's a Halifax artist who does a lot of stuff. And uh, we work really well together. We've got lots of good ideas back and forth. So a lot of like our labels, um, the pencil taps and stuff really came from a lot of uh, collaboration between the two of us. Okay, so I guess you'll come here for your growlers, for yep. your, all your merch, you have some great, really great shirts and things, uh, very distinctive. Yep. Um, and I love this kind of couch setup here. Also, you, you have, how many people can f you fit in your tap room? Uh, our capacity is about 60 inside and mm. then about another 60 outside on the patio. So yeah. patio pretty much doubles our, our capacity. It's great. You must be really happy to see the nice weather coming. Oh, the nice weathers. And, yeah. and anybody in the beer business yeah. really likes seeing the weather get nice. Yeah, well, I find Nova Scotians, you know, they do buy a lot of package products and take it home, but they stay home. They don't really yeah. move around a lot. Uh, cold weather, uh, I find when the warmer weather, everybody starts kind of moving around, coming alive, yep. and, and go out and doing these visits. So. Uh, what a great spot though, like I say, with the lake here. Uh, that trail goes all the way around the lake, I believe. It does, yeah. yeah. And that, this is where the pumpkin races are, this the pumpkin boat races in the fall? We're at the finish line of the pumpkin wow. regatta. And actually, we're, uh, this summer, we're putting in a uh, bike, uh, like kind of a walking path that's connecting the town sidewalk with that great uh, loop that goes around the reservoir here, so. Outstanding. Uh, that's, you know, that's all about being outside and enjoying things. Yeah. And then enjoying a beer after. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's more Nova Scotian than that? Yes. Yeah. 